in this video, we'll present um, a method for finding compositions of trig functions and inverse trig functions when the outer and inner functions don't match. That is to say, when we have something like the sine of the arc tangent of negative one seven. So the trick here, and this trick works, you know, it would work if we had the cosine of the arc sine or the tangent of the arc cosine or any combination like that. Um, the trick I'm going to do to allow us to evaluate this is to give this a name. I'm going to call it theta. So theta is the arc tangent of negative one seventh. Now I'm going to take the tangent of both sides. On the right, the tangent and the arc tangent will cancel, and I'll get negative one seventh. And now I'm going to build a right triangle. But come on, let me change the color. For just a moment. I'm going to pretend we don't have that negative sign. We're going to come back to it, as you see. The tangent of theta is one seventh. The trick here is that we're going to build a right triangle. And then we're going to use right triangle trigonometry. We're going to say, okay, if the opposite over the adjacent is one seventh, then um, we can create a right triangle where the opposite is one and the adjacent is seven. Yeah. And now we want the sine of this angle. It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. And we are going to, um, we don't know the hypotenuse, but the Pythagorean theorem comes through. And we get the square root of 50. That's five times the square root of two, but I'm not going to bother simplifying this. I'll just write down the square root of 50. Then the sine is one over the hypotenuse is one over the square root of 50. Problem solved. Or is it? I mean, hopefully we don't 
haven't forgotten that I promised to come back to that negative sign. Um, the quirk to this method is that it's always going to give you positive solutions in that you can't really create a right triangle where the opposite over the adjacent is a negative number. I mean, right triangles have positive sides. So we just sort of you know, we saw this negative sign, but we just kind of ignored it for a bit. We said, um, well, we'll pretend it's not there, and we'll just have a positive one and a positive seven. And... What all this means at the end of the day is that this method is always going to give a, a positive answer, but that might be right. Or that might be wrong. We get a positive answer. The real answer might be positive. But the real answer might also be a negative. So we have to choose. It's either 1 over the square root of 50 or it's negative 1 over the square root of 50. But what's it going to be? So to make this determination, we have to do some analysis with this statement, the thing that I promised we'd come back to that the tangent of theta is negative one over seven. Or rather, I'm mistaken. We want to come back to this statement, that theta is the arctangent of negative one-seventh. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that you know, what I wrote down, that the tangent of theta is negative one-seventh. And it also tells us that theta is stuck between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. And what these two pieces of information together tell us is that theta is down here in the fourth quadrant. So there are two, um, there are two quadrants where the tangent can be negative. The second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So the tangent being negative tells us we're in one of these two quadrants. And then the tangent being between negative pi over two and 
positive pi over 2 tells us our angle is there. It's a negative angle in the fourth quadrant. So, so, what's the sine of theta? Well, it's either positive or negative. Angles in the fourth quadrant have negative y coordinates, so they have negative signs, leaving us with negative 1 over the square root of 50 as an answer. Um, this is how I've always learned to do these problems. I'm stuck in my ways. If you don't like this, if you don't like just ignoring the negative side and then coming back to it, the textbook provides an alternate way of doing these problems using the Pythagorean identity. So you can use the Pythagorean identity, you can draw triangles, I won't have my feelings hurt if you prefer the textbook, but as I say, this is how I always have done this.